गुड मॉर्निंग टू दिस सेवनटीन्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स कंप्रेसिबल फ्लो एंड गैस डायनेमिक्स सो इफ यू डू रिमेंबर वी वर एक्चुअली ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द फ्लो एनालिसिस ओवर ऑब्लिक सॉक वेव्स इन द प्रीवियस सेक्शन ओके एंड पर्टिकुलरली वी अंडरस्टूड द नीड ऑफ थीटा बीटा एंड एम रिलेशन इन एडिशन टू द नॉर्मल सॉक वेव्स फॉर डिटरमाइनिंग द रिसोर्स ऑफ प्रॉपर्टीज अक्रॉस द uh across the sock wave okay so now importantly uh we have made two conclusion uh, uh, we have made two conclusions that corresponding to theta equal to 0 degree particularly from theta beta m diagram we will be having one important solution that beta is equal to 90 degree okay and another thing i told you that when my theta equal to 0 corresponding to the weak region also i am having some points okay but for that point to touch the boundary theta has to be slightly above than b okay another physical interpretation of that fact can be in case in case the uh, for theta equal to 0 also if i am finding some finite value of beta uh, i am getting beta as nothing but finite but this is for the case of say weak sock wave okay so there also physically i can say that i may have a situation something like this that i have an oblique sock wave okay and what is happening basically in the upstream of the oblique sock wave also streamline is like this and in the downstream also streamline is like this so this is the situation when my deflection angle theta is equal to 0 okay so this type of situation that we do have the presence of a sock wave but it is not actually influencing the direction of the flow and it is not changing the property this type of thing will be happening if we have weak sock wave okay and that particular type of weak sock wave has to have angle beta is nothing but equal to mu mac angle and this type of wave is called as a mac wave is this point clear so corresponding to theta equal to 0 when i am getting fine beta as finite value for weak solution in another physical interpretation we can say that that particular beta will be nothing but equal to the mu where uh, we are having the presence of a mac wave which is special case of a uh, infinitely weak sock wave where i will not be having any flow deflection and any changes in the flow property so this is first situation and uh, second beta equal to 90 degree that is already known to us so if say we have a normal sock wave okay so if we have a normal sock wave then also actually flow deflection angle is actually the same but in this case properties will be changing the significant so this is the strongest sock wave okay so flow deflection angle is not changing but properties are changing um, actually strongly okay so uh, this is the typical uh, uh, situation another important aspect which i want to uh, tell you over here is that um, in case of whatever the analysis i presented yesterday that was applicable nothing but for flow over a wedge okay so in case of flow over a wedge we will be experiencing the formation of a sock wave something like this okay and then uh, my flow properties will change like this this is say m1 this is m2 so flow properties will change something like this okay now what will happen uh, if you see in the downstream i will be having some property p2 okay so i will be finding that whenever i am studying this type of flow over a wedge this particular pressure p2 if i calculate at this surface of the wedge okay so i will be finding that p2 particularly at surface of the say wedge okay that will be nothing but a fixed quantity okay so that will not vary along the surface of the wedge however if in place of this two dimensional wedge if i consider a three dimensional cone structure so say this is nothing but my 
conical structure okay so for conical structure under the identical conditions there also i will find nothing but the presence of an oblique shock wave okay so it means that why i am telling to you because sometimes this happens that we may consider that we are having the same type of geometry and we can apply the same relations whatever are applicable over here for this structure as well okay but if you see the fundamentally the difference is that this is a wedge shape so in case of wedge shape cross section will remain constant at each and every transverse direction so if you move into the board okay a plane into or out of the board then everywhere you are having a same cross section so it means this is a two dimensional wedge structure but if you go for this conical structure then actually i will be having symmetry about this axis position and whenever i will be moving in the transverse direction into or out of the board the area of cross section will keep on changing okay so majorly if you see the uh, major difference will be that here i will be having the similar situation m1 m2 however this streamline may be slightly curved not exactly the straight one but it may have slight curve over here and in addition to that if i have to calculate the surface pressure distribution whenever we are studying all these things surface pressure distribution is important because that will be controlling the lift and drag forces okay which may be rather uh, later on important in defining the stability of the system okay so if i see the surface pressure distribution of this p2s for this conical surface it will be actually variable it will not be fixed is this one clear so the major difference between a wedge structure and a conical structure is that that the surface pressure distribution for conical structure will not be constant which is constant for a uh, wedge structure okay so this is the reason that at the moment i am not considering uh, uh, this conical structure so this conical structure uh, i will uh, deal in the uh, subsequent lectures particularly uh, when we will be talking about the governing equations in cylindrical coordinate system okay so once we have done that then uh, i will actually discuss this conical structure flow over conical st uh, structure in uh, more details okay so at the moment just i want to make the difference up to this point is it clear then comes so now what we are doing basically over here uh, you might be you might have understood that when we derived the theta beta m relation uh, particularly from the graphical understanding of the theta beta m relation we were able to make many many inferences okay physical inferences actually so in the graphical way it was very easy for us to understand and make different physical inferences similarly uh, one very very important graph uh, uh, graphical representation is used in the analysis of compressible flows and that particular uh, graph is called as shock polar okay so shock polar is uh, uh, typical graphical representation that is also used uh, for analyzing the compressible flow situations and make many important physical inferences okay so uh, situation is the same we do have a shock wave and this particular oblique shock wave has formed at an angle of beta then i have over here nothing but v1 velocity so this v1 is actually not be having any component in uh, say this is my x direction this is my y direction so this v1 will not have any component in y direction so v y1 over here is nothing but equal to 0 and v x1 is nothing but equal to v1 okay so then uh, this v1 after the shock wave will be actually deflecting at certain angle so say this is my v2 and this angle of deflection is nothing but say theta okay now if you analyze this v2 v2 will be having two components so this is the component of uh, v2 in x direction so vx2 and this is the component of v in y direction this is my vy2 okay so i have fixed the xy coordinate system and corresponding to that if i uh, consider the oblique shock wave situation this is how i will be getting nothing but the velocity triangles okay so these velocity triangles i have plotted on a physical plane okay this is my physical plane 
one important plane we have uh, that is called as a uh, hodograph plane so what we do if i consider that i will be showing these velocities on a velocity diagram okay and that velocity diagram is nothing but its abscissa is vx x component of velocity and its ordinate is v1 okay this type of diagram is called as hodograph plane okay so if you represent your velocities on a diagram whose abscissa and uh, ordinate actually is velocity only then we call this diagram as hodograph plane okay so in this hodograph plane if you have to represent say your uh, v1 situation and v2 situation so you will get your point number this is the vx and uh, if you see this physical plane vx particularly for point number 1 this is equal to v1 okay so if i take v1 distance over here say this is my v1 distance so this is my representation of a v1 okay then similarly if i represent v2 v2 is at an angle theta to x direction so similarly i have to represent v, uh, v2 over here one important point when i am having the presence of a shock wave what shock wave will do shock wave will actually decrease the value of this velocity okay so v2 velocity will be lesser in comparison to v1 velocity is this point clear so i will have some angle theta and corresponding to this angle theta i have this point 2 where my velocity is v2 and if i have to see its component so this is one of its component which is v y2 and this is another component which is v uh, x2 so up to this this component is v x2 and complete is v1 actually okay this complete is v1 is this point clear so what i have done the same velocities for a given angle theta i have represented nothing but on a photograph plane okay now what we can do what we can do i can take the same diagram vx vy okay uh, say this is my velocity v1 so v1 is nothing but my given velocity okay and i have just now observed that say this is my point a okay so initial starting point is a so just now i have observed that if i consider angle theta then my v2 velocity will be something like this and say this is my point b if i now increase the flow deflection angle okay so if i increase the flow deflection angle what will happen i will be getting an oblique shock wave of more strength is this one clear so when we increase the flow deflection angle what happens i will be having shock wave but that will be stronger okay strong uh, thick uh, sorry strong uh, so that will transform from normal shock to having some strong strength and finally it will become nothing but a weak shock wave are you understanding this how i am telling this if you recall our theta beta m diagram how was it theta and beta it was something like this so what situation i am having i am having over here a normal shock wave then if i increase the theta i will be having a strong shock wave but its strength will keep on decreasing from the normal shock wave is this point clear and then this is the point where i will be having theta max and after this point over here i will be having weak solution only and if i go beyond theta max then i don't have the presence of a i don't have the presence of a strong shock wave is this point clear strong shock wave or even weak shock wave 
because beyond this point i will be having detached shock wave not the attached shock wave okay so when i am keeping when i am increasing the theta what is happening upon increase of theta strength of the shock wave is decreasing okay so i will be getting my v2 something like this okay this will keep on happening so say this is my point c this is point d something like this now if i draw the locus of all these points if i draw the locus of all these points for different different values of theta varying from theta equal to 0 to theta max whatever this curve i am getting this type of curve is nothing but known as shock polar is this point clear so what i am doing this is my upstream velocity v1 okay or for this upstream velocity if i consider flow deflection at different different angles so for different so first see say for theta 1 say for theta 2 say for theta 3 like this i am considering the all the possible values of all the possible values of theta for theta varying from uh, 0 to theta max okay so in this reason the locus of all these output points because when my theta is changing ultimately the output is also changing okay so as this output is changing so what i will be finding i will be finding that i will be uh, finding that um, upon changing the theta if i draw the locus of all these points for different values of theta whatever this curve i will get this is nothing but called as a shock polar okay now this particular shock polar what i can do i can also uh, represent it it in terms of non dimensional axis okay so i can represent it in terms of non dimensional axis vx by a star and vy by a star before this let me tell you one important point the important point is that this particular shock polar i have obtained for different different values of theta and corresponding to these different values of theta my point a was fixed whereas point a is nothing but representing the upstream velocity condition okay so it means that this is my upstream mach number so i can say that this particular curve is for a given upstream mach number m1 okay so if i change the upstream mach number then what will happen this point a will get displaced somewhere over here if i increase the mach number so for increased mach number this point will be something like this is this point clear now what i want to do basically this curve i want to actually non dimensionalize with a star parameter why i want to non dimensionalize with a star the reason is just now we have understood that this particular curve is applicable for a single mach number <coughs> if i keep on increasing the mach number what will happen this curve will keep on shifting towards right and i am having highest limit for mach number is say limiting condition is m1 approaches to infinity so when my m1 is approaching to infinity then on my hodograph plane i have to extend this hodograph in x axis up to infinity okay so it is not possible for me to actually complete the hodograph for the entire range of mach numbers on this hodograph plane if i draw it uh, with the axis of vx and vy okay so what we want to do now we want to now non dimensionalize these parameters with a star okay so why a star so you people will be remembering earlier i told you that if i have a supersonic flow and if we adiabatically slows it down such that it reaches to sonic condition then my t temperature at that particular point will be modified to t star value and corresponding to that whatever my speed of sound will be that will be a star okay so likewise in the downstream and upstream of the shock wave because in the downstream and upstream of the shock wave i have situation 1 and situation 2 so i will be having some 
a star 1 and some a star 2. But we have also seen earlier that if I have nothing but an adiabatic situation, then for adiabatic situation my a star remains constant. Okay. For a particular streamline, if I have adiabatic situation, then A star remains constant. So, flow across a shock wave is nothing but an adiabatic process because in the shock wave, we are not adding any heat, we are not removing any heat. So, that is why particularly for a shock wave, A1 star will be equal to A2 star. Okay. So, once A1 star is equal to A2 star, that I can call as nothing but A star and this A star then I can... Uh, non dimensionalize my plane, my x is with Vx by A star and Vy by A star. Now, you will understand what is the benefit of this and this I have told you earlier also when we have talked about the Mach number M star. Okay. So, what I have done over here now, this plane is my Vx by A star and this is my Vy by A star. Okay. So, if you do remember, we know that Mach number M star, M1 star is nothing but V1 by A star. Okay. And if you do remember, we also found that when my Mach number M is approaching to infinity, M1 is approaching to infinity, corresponding to that value of M1 star was nothing but square root of gamma plus 1 upon gamma minus 1. Okay, and this value was equal to 2.45. So, it means that now if you consider a infinite Mach number, okay, it was not possible for us to show the shock polar on photograph plane. But if I take this non-dimensionalized parameter, then my value of M1 star corresponding to infinite Mach number will be nothing but 2.45. 4, 5. Okay. So, it means that I can now show this on a photograph plane. Is this point clear? So, <clears throat> for a given Mach number, till now what I have seen, for a given Mach number, my photograph looks something like this. Okay. So, say this is for Mach number of 2. If I increase the Mach number to say 4, then my photograph will look something like this. And when I increase the Mach number to infinity, then my photograph will become. So, this is nothing but for m1 equal to infinity and when my m1 is infinity corresponding to that what will the value of m1 star 2.45 and this velocity over here on a hodograph plane this was nothing but v1 so now this is v1 by a star so it means this number is nothing but m1 star so from here to here i have m1 star distance and that is equal to 2.45 is this point clear? So, now what I have done, I have shown you that if I have to plot these shock polars for different values of m1, then by taking the help of this non-dimensionalization, by taking the help of m star, I can even plot this shock polar for an infinite Mach number. Okay. So, because when my Mach number is becoming infinite corresponding to that, my m1 star is actually 2.45. Okay. So, in uh, uh, let me show this uh, photograph on the negative axis also. So, this will be nothing but symmetric in uh, negative axis. So, Vy by A star and this is Vx by A star. Okay. So, what I have got for a uh, Mach number of say 2, I have got it like this for Mach number of 4. I got it like this and I will be finding for Mach number of infinity, it will become nothing but a circle. 
okay for mat number of infinity this sock polar becomes a circle and this circle will intersect this axis at 2.45 and this back axis it intersects at nothing but a value of 0.4 okay and here also i will be having the symmetric situation is this point clear so all these curves are nothing but the sock polar corresponding to a given value of the is this point clear now let me consider only a single sock polar and then let's try to make some physical inferences okay so a single sock polar on this looks something like this okay now if you draw a line from this point such that it is tangent to your sock polar so this represents condition of theta max maximum deflection angle is this point clear so this is my sock polar and if my line is tangent to the sock polar then whatever deflection angle i am getting over here that is nothing corresponding to the theta max situation okay for any arbitrary value of theta which is less than theta max what i can see that my this line is crossing the sock polar at two points okay so first point represents the strong sock solution and second point represents the weak sock solution okay so we have seen from our theta beta m diagram also that when my theta is less than theta max corresponding to that i don't uh, i have nothing but the two values of beta okay so that is this value is corresponding to a strong sock uh, strong sock wave and this is corresponding to a weak sock wave okay is this point clear and another important point is another important point is say this is my point b for some angle theta okay now if i draw a line through point a and b and if i draw a perpendicular from this point to this line okay so this angle is 90 degree so i will get a point say over here some point this point i had i think taken c earlier and this is say any point d like that so i can call this as point e okay so now you can see i am getting a triangle o a e this triangle o a is making certain angle with this axis and this angle is nothing but our beta sock angle okay so this is the angle at which my sock wave will form for this particular situation is this point clear you can further uh, what you can do you can make uh, analogy with the help of uh, velocity diagram so what you can do uh you can further draw this something like this this is v1 okay and uh, this was my point b so this was nothing but v2 and angle between v1 and v2 was theta okay and when i have extended this v1 and then i have made a perpendicular from here this is my point e this is point a and this is point o so this angle i called as nothing but angle beta okay so how you can make the inferences now if you consider this uh, if this is my sock wave so velocity along this will be my tangential velocity 
and I say that tangential velocity remains conserved. So, I can say that V t 1 equal to V t 2 and from this understanding this will comes out to be V 1 times of cos beta. Okay. And any velocity which is normal to the this plane. So, normal to this plane one is this component. So, this will be my V normal to and one normal is this one till point A. This will be becoming my V normal 1. Okay. Is this point clear? So, from this uh, uh, diagram which we are calling as nothing but the shock polar. From the shock polar itself actually what we can do all the parameters which we have earlier obtained from theta beta m relations same set of parameters can be obtained from the shock polar as well. Okay. And over here what I have done when I have explained you the shock polar I have taken the help of actually graphical representation. Okay. So, graphically I have explained you how we can construct the shock polar, how we can construct the velocity diagram and how we can determine the uh, shock wave angle and tangential and normal components of the velocity. Okay. But this particular uh, shock polar can be mathematically also determined. Okay. So, analytical uh, equation of this shock polar uh, is Vy by A star square equal to m1 star minus vx by a star whole square into vx by a star m1 star minus 1 divided by 2 by gamma plus 1 m1 star whole square minus of vx by a star m1 star plus 1. So, this is the typical uh, equation of a shock polar for the given value of m1. Okay. So, the meaning is uh, if you substitute, okay, you can note it down. If you substitute the value of m1 or m1 star over here. So, for given value of m1, I can calculate m1 star. If I substitute the value of m1 star over here, then this equation will give me locus of Vy by A star and Vx by A star. Okay. So, for different values of Vx by A star, I will get values of Vy by A star and you can see this is in the square root. So, for single value of Vx by A star, I will get two set of roots, one in positive side, one in negative sign. Okay. So, that is something which I have represented over here. So, you can see for given value of Vx by A star, one root is positive, one root is negative. Then for another value one root is positive. So, like this you can construct a uh, shock polar using this analytical expression. Okay. So, derivation of this analytical expression I am not considering uh, over here because uh, I have uh, uh, already explained you the graphical formulation. Okay. So, if you want to go for the derivation of this then actually you can uh, refer to this book fundamentals of compressible flow by S M Yahya. I have already uh, mentioned that as one of the reference book. So, in that book you will be finding the complete derivation of this uh, SOC polar equation. Okay. So, up to this point is it clear? So, it means that SOC polar is nothing but another, uh, another I can say that uh, uh, popular, another popular uh, graphical tool which can be actually used to uh, determine different parameters which are associated with the shock waves. Okay. Now, whether if we talk about shock polar or if we talk about the or if we talk about the uh, earlier theta beta m diagram, we found that when our theta is greater than flow deflection angle is greater than theta max, then we do not have any solution existing for an attached shock wave. Okay. So, in that type of situation what we will be finding? We will be finding that we are having formation of nothing but a detached shock wave. Okay. So, for a typical detached shock wave what happens if this is your wedge structure and what I have to consider over here that this theta is greater than theta max. So, here I will be finding that nothing but a shock wave something like this. 
which is detached to the surface and this is slightly bent also so this is called as a detached shock wave now if you go to the analysis of detached shock wave actually it is very very challenging and uh, due to the complexities it is not possible to analytically find out the complete solution for the detached shock waves okay so for the case of detached shock wave if you have to find the complete solution then you have to refer to cfd simulations or numerical methods okay but some physical inferences we can make over here by understanding its analogy to uh, the different points on theta beta uh, diagram so if you see theta beta diagram on the theta beta diagram we have seen that this is my point of normal shock wave and this is the point of theta max so when i shifts down from theta equal to 0 to theta max when i change so what happens i am changing my behavior from normal shock wave to a stronger wave and in this particular reason i will be having nothing but the weak solution okay so one thing and this particular weak solution uh, actually is corresponding to the situation of a attached wave so over here this situation is not coming over here but one important point we can make over here is that if you see this central point in the central point a streamline will be something like this and this streamline will not deflect and then strike with this point okay so what is happening for this central point for this central point i can say that this is nothing but identical to a this is identical to a normal shock wave okay and when we move away from this for increased values of theta so from this point if you see theta wave is deflecting more so for increased values of theta our wave is strong enough okay it is not yet weak it is strong enough it means it will decrease the mach number in this re region if you see mach number 2 is less than 1 so in this particular region also we will be finding that we are having sufficient strength of the strong uh, shock wave to decrease the downstream mach number less than 1 so it means in this particular region also i can say that my shock wave is strong okay and this strong shock wave is actually decreasing the downstream mach number as less than fine and finally here also in this particular zone of weak shock wave what we see our mach number is greater than 1 and only in weak region also i find a very small narrow zone where my shock number is becoming less than 1 so we will be finding that after this particular reason what is happening basically after this particular reason i will be finding that my mach number will be greater than 1 so this is the case of a now so in this weak shock region what will be happening this will come and then this will deflect slightly but try to deflect smoothly okay and when we will be moving far away from the object then free stream will not experience any presence of the object okay if you move sufficiently far away from this obstruction then what will happen very far away from this the flow field will not even felt that there is some obstruction present it will smoothly move so what i am having behind this detached shock wave i have certain reason where my uh, wave uh, shock wave is so strong that it is decreasing the downstream mach number and it is creating a subsonic resign over here okay and after this point actually mach number is increasing so in this particular reason our uh, mach number accelerates okay so in between this subsonic and supersonic situation i will be having some region over here which i am drawing with dashed lines corresponding to which my mach number is equal to one so this is my sonic condition okay so what i can say that i can say that in this strong wave a uh, strong shock wave region first mach number is decreasing 
to a subsonic situation and then that subsonic flow is actually accelerating to once again reach a supersonic situation okay so what we can do whenever <clears throat> we are having the formation of detached shock wave then depending upon the situation uh, whether we can consider it as strong shock wave or weak shock wave so for different portions of this uh, physical domain we can actually apply the similar relations to get approximate results okay whereas for uh, doing the complete analysis of this we have to go for the numerical methods is this point clear okay now we have another important point which is called as shock wave reflection <clears throat> okay so what happens basically we have seen that if this is my boundary if this is at certain angle theta so here i have a concave corner at angle theta so what will be happening i will be finding that this is my flow stream line and here i will be finding the formation of a say this is my point a from point a a shock wave is starting and this shock wave is actually ultimately changing my flow sorry so this should be parallel to the surface okay like this you will be finding that i have a shock wave so if i don't have anything over there then i can extend this shock wave up to infinity and then i can see a situation but if say what i am saying i am having one more solid boundary present over here now what will happen first this shock wave will extend up to point b okay this is my point b okay now this is my flow stream line this flow stream line will keep on moving forward and attached to this solid boundary or what will happen sorry same path like this it will deflect parallel to deflect and become parallel to the wall okay yes correct so basically what will be happening because this flow from the concepts of fluid mechanics it has to remain attached to the surface okay so as the flow has to remain attached to the surface i will be finding that after point b also i will be having streamline which is adhered to this surface is this one clear so any streamline which is coming that has to also become parallel to this line so here also i will be having streamlines parallel something like this so for these streamlines to become parallel what has to happen we must have another presence of another shock wave is this point clear because when the flow was deflecting at that point there was a formation of shock wave and that shock wave was actually responsible for the sudden deflection of the flow now flow has deflected and taken this path now flow has taken this particular path so if flow is taking this path and once again because of the presence of a solid boundary flow has to align with the solid boundary it means it has to once again deflect suddenly so if it has to deflect suddenly we must have the presence of another shock wave so that is what i have done i have drawn another shock wave over here and what i am if you see my streamline i am showing is that first it is deflecting at first shock wave then it is striking with the second shock wave and then deflecting again okay so interestingly you can see that if this flow deflection angle is theta over here here also it has to be theta because this line and this line are 
parallel to each other. So, this bottom surface and this surface are parallel to each other. So, as these two surfaces are parallel to each other because of that, if at the first shock wave I have theta as angle of deflection for the flow, at the second shock wave also I should have theta as the angle of deflection. Is this point clear? So, this first shock wave which I am having over here, this is called as incident shock wave. Okay. And the second one over here is called as reflected shock wave. First one is incident shock wave and second one is reflected shock wave. Let us consider that first shock wave is making an angle of beta 1. So, this shock angle is beta 1. What will be the angle for second shock wave? Can I say this as the angle for second shock wave? Beta 2. Is this beta 2? Is it correct? What is the definition of beta? Angle between direction of flow and occurrence of a wave. So, that is our angle beta. So, here direction of flow is horizontal and shock wave is like this. So, this is my angle beta 1. Here you can see the direction of the flow is like this and this is the presence of a shock wave. So, this is my angle beta 2. Now, you tell me out of this beta 1 and beta 2 which one, which one will be greater. So, if you see we have now situation before the shock wave I was having Mach number m1. When it will be going through this first shock wave I will be having Mach number m2 okay, which is less than m1. When it will go through the another shock wave then my Mach number will be m3. Okay. So, you can see over here that we are having same deflection angle but value of m is changing. So, what I will be getting? Let me show you. If I get a theta beta diagram, on a theta beta diagram, this is my say corresponding to m1, then same theta beta diagram corresponding to m2 will be something like this. Sorry. I have to start at the same point and then this will be corresponding to M2. This is my theta beta diagram corresponding to M2. If my flow deflection angle is theta, so theta is my flow deflection angle. For same flow deflection angle theta, what is basically happening? Earlier these two were my angles okay, and now these two are my angles. So, if I have a strong shock wave corresponding to say if for m1 strong shock wave was occurring, okay, then for the same value of theta corresponding to strong shock wave for m2 I am getting this angle. Okay. So, it means if I have presence of a strong, strong shock wave then beta 2 has to be less than beta 1. Is this point clear? If I have the formation of a weak shock wave then beta 2 will be greater than beta 1 because for the case of a weak incident shock wave my Mach number m2 will be greater than m1. So, then I am moving towards the value of higher Mach number. Is this point clear? Are you understanding this point? So, what I am saying is that uh, these are the curves for m1 and m2 where m2 is less than m1. Now, if I consider the same deflection angle, okay, that is what I have done over here. I have physically created a situation of same deflection angle because this line and this line are parallel. So, for the same deflection angle, for the same deflection angle, I am finding that uh, if I am in the 
region of strong shock wave then my beta 2 will be less than beta 1 but if i have the presence of weaker incident and weaker reflected shock waves then i will be having beta 2 greater than beta is this one clear now an interesting fact so this type of reflection is particularly called as regular reflection of shock wave okay this is called as regular reflection of shock wave now we have one more type of reflection which is called as so interestingly the point is if you find some another point over here then flow will be deflecting again so you may have multiple reflections of the shock wave okay and depending upon our requirements we can actually control these fine so now uh, this point is clear this type of reflection is called as regular reflection okay then we may have uh, another type of reflection which is called as irregular reflection or mac reflection okay so what will happen in this type of situation say this is my theta beta diagram okay and this is for m1 and then i have uh, another line for m2 which is less than m1 now say my initial deflection angle is high this is my initial deflection angle so what is happening now initial deflection angle is so high that it is not crossing the m2 curve on theta beta diagram so it means corresponding to mac2 i don't have any solution possible is this one clear so for this type of situation what happens we will be finding that if i have a incident shock wave this incident shock wave will not touch the boundary from the boundary we will be having another normal shock wave over here okay and from this point then i will be having a reflected shock wave are you understanding this point so here what is happening my initial mac number m1 and angle of deflection was such that that corresponding to this i can get a shock wave over here at an angle beta 1 okay but corresponding to the second point because after this what is happening after this flow is deflecting and mac number is becoming m2 okay so this m2 is for the same value of theta because ultimately what i have to do i have to once again deflect this streamline through the uh, same angle theta okay so if i have to deflect this streamline through the angle theta uh, then what will be happening i require a reflected wave over here but for same angle of theta corresponding to m2 i don't have any solution present okay so it means i cannot have an attached the shock wave to the surface okay i cannot have attached the shock wave to the surface this solution if it is not available it means we are having nothing but a detached shock wave so this shock wave is not now attached to the wall so near the wall i will be find i will find a uh, the presence of a normal shock wave and then this normal shock wave and incident wave are meeting at a point and from that point i am having nothing but a reflected shock wave okay and this particular point is sometimes also called as triple point so at this point you are having the presence of three shock waves one is incident normal and reflected okay now if you see the flow field any streamline which is crossing this one that will be remain normal but 
if its Mach number is M2, downstream Mach number will become M3 dash. Here what will happen? M1, M2 and say M3. And this M3 and M3 dash will be different. Why? Because here I am having two oblique waves, incident and reflected. Flow is coming across through two and here it is coming across through a single normal shock wave which is having more strength in comparison to the remaining portion. Okay. So, we will be finding that we will be having some discontinuity in the Mach number or velocity over here along a particular line and this particular line is called as let me draw it with different color. So, this dash line I am drawing over here which will demarcate actually the flow discontinuity. Above this my flow Mach number is different and below this flow Mach number is different. So, this type of discontinuity is called as slip or slip line. Is this point clear? So, what we have? Uh, we have a different Mach number above and below the slip line. However, uh, uh, the parameters like temperature, static temperature etcetera, these will reach to same value. So, here along with the uh, Mach number discontinuity, you may find discontinuity in static pressure as well. Okay. But the discontinuity in other parameters such as temperature etcetera, these will equilibrate uh, because of the time scale of the phenomena. Okay. So, this type of reflection is called as regular reflection or Mach reflection. Now, uh, I will stop at this point and uh, we will further discuss in the next lecture.